edition of Race Face Drive in 5. Jacob Seelman is always with you. Tegan Noland is back with us for the first time in a couple of episodes. And I know, Tegan, you've been back and forth and back and forth, but having a lot of fun doing it. A couple of shoot, summer shootout races in the Bandolero since the last time we talked. And before I talk about the specifics of those races, I'm just curious because you've not had a lot of races in this car compared to everybody you're racing against, but it's looked like the last couple of weeks, you've started to feel a lot more comfortable in the car. Tell me about that. Yeah, it's all like, Obviously, yeah, like you said, there's we're not in that car town because we're out here in Kansas and they're all out on the East Coast where they can race every week and maybe even almost every day. So it's really hard to get that experience. And the summer shootout helps out a lot. Obviously, Nashville going back back in the year, that helped out a bit because um, Nashville, it's the mini ovals, not exactly, but it's just kind of similar to Charlotte. So obviously that helped out a bit, but yeah, I've been getting a real good feel for the car. Driving wise, how do you feel like you've gotten better as a driver at Charlotte over the last couple weeks? It's been a ton. No, it, um, that car teaches you a lot because you have to get a good feel for it because it's not like the form digits where it's like you're flat out around the whole track. It's like you have to get the brakes. So what comes with that is the car being like tight and loose. Um, and that can teach you a lot. So let's go back and talk about uh, things you've had. Actually, you had a double header over 4th of July week, and then you had another race this past week as well. I know 4th of July was not the hol- not the holiday you were hoping for. You guys had some mechanical troubles, I know, during those two races. Have you guys gotten everything figured out, and what happened? Yeah, we got everything figured out. It was just the... Um... I guess what I was told was the hub on the back end of the car. Um, what they thought was like the it so the hub, the teeth on the hub kept coming off and they thought it was just like the engine. This is what I was told. They thought the engine was like crooked or something. So I was causing the hub to like rubbing in something. So that was what happened on the first day, I believe, or maybe it was practice. But then we went out either for the first race or the second race, and it happened again which was like, okay, this is kind of weird. Um, so, or it was the first race to where it first happened, and then we went out for the second race, and it happened again. It's like, okay, this is, like, real weird. So they took it back to the shop and figured out that the uh, chain was, like, misaligned or something, and it kept rubbing against the hub, causing the teeth to come out. Okay. One, one of those things that's, like, it's it's a perfect storm of really weird things happening, but just something that you weren't sure to, or they weren't sure to check for right away. Yeah, I know, because that was the first time we've ever had it happen in these two years. We've had, we've had a ton of things with the chain, and like, I think it was the week or two before they'd fix the chain, so that was definitely the last thing they would expect it to be. For sure. So you got all that fixed, went out this past Tuesday, and... I know one of the things you were excited about before before we talk about the actual finish on paper, I know you were excited to finally battle right up at the front and lead some laps. Uh, I, I can tell just looking at you, you've come back with a little bit of confidence, haven't you, finally being able to uh, to see your number on top of the uh, of the scoring tower for a few laps. Yeah, it was nice. Um, obviously, started off with qualifying. We haven't qualified. We've qualified in the back every. Because four minutes, it's not, you don't qualify. You ran it, run a heat race. So Charlotte's a lot different. It's qualifying. And we haven't been able to qualify well, obviously. We've got like seventh, eighth, maybe even 11th in there. But this time we went out and we qualified fifth. So we were like, okay. And that raised my confidence a ton. Because um, not only do we have fast car, but that's the first time I've qualified real well. So I know that I have a fast, fast car. So I go out for the race, um, I do good, and then, like you said, we got to the front eventually. What was that like, being able to, and, and it wasn't just you got to the front, but I know one of those restarts when you were battling and starting to lead some laps, you were on the outside, too, compared to uh, compared to 
Wyatt and a couple of the other front runners there, which anybody that has seen Charlotte and kind of how it races, it's like a tiny Martinsville where the corners are super tight. So it's, it's not easy to do what you did and go lead laps on the outside. No, it really wasn't. So I, if you didn't see it, I was like in fifth or sixth and everyone from me went to the inside. And I'm like, okay, let me take this shot. And I chose the outside and it planned out well. Everyone in the first corner, I was like, eh, maybe this wasn't a good option because um, entering the corner, the inside line got a huge mm -hmm. jump, but exiting, I got an even bigger jump. And I was like, okay, maybe this was the right pick. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I, I know you've told me a couple of times, but this is the first time you've gotten really to uh, to mess with the choose rule in one of your races. And I know you pay attention to NASCAR on the weekends when you're not racing. And you've said that you're having a lot of fun trying to figure out how the choose works and being able to do that similar to what they do on Sundays. Yeah, um, obviously the first ever driver me at Charlotte, they were talking about the choose cone last year. And I was like, sick, I, I get to choose. Because I, I was pumped about that. Then I was kind of down that beginners didn't get to. So okay. now moving up to bandits, I was pretty happy about that. Um, I like the choose cone. I like how they do it because it plans out for a lot more like strategy and stuff. And I was going to say, let, makes you think a lot more, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. So... I know the finish on paper will say eighth place, but like we said, you were leading laps and as summer, as summer shootout sometimes does got a little crazy at the end, had a couple cautions. Um, I know one of the cautions you got turned around late going into turn one where you got going and they didn't end up throwing a caution, but e even in spite of all that, you still passed some cars and came from the back to finish eighth. Yeah, it was definitely interesting, and in corner number one, I, I should have, and I went over this after the race, I was like, dang it, because I was so good on the outside, I was doing so good for a couple of laps, and the two cars in front of me chose inside, and now I'm still regretting choosing that inside behind them, mm -hmm. but in that moment, it was a lot of stress, the two cars in front of me are fast two cars in a shootout, so I just wanted to follow them, didn't get a good restart, just sent it, back in spun on me. And like you said, I didn't get a caution. You're seven races in now to the shootout, so you've got three more before the end of the summer. Um, do you feel like now that you know what the car is capable of, that you you know get the right brakes and maybe can contend for a win over the, over the last couple of weeks? Oh, yeah. I feel like we have a winning car. Maybe even next week's the week that we can do it. Um, but, yeah, I've gotten a lot more used to this car. Um, and yeah, I think I can get a win in these next three races. I know you've put a lot of focus on the Bandolero this summer to make sure you can get it right. But I do know in a couple of weeks coming up, you've got, uh, you get to jump back in the quarter midget for an All-American Clash race too. I think you guys are going up to Little Elko in Minnesota to uh, to run here in a couple of weeks. You looking forward to it to, and just, you know, having a chance to do something different again? Oh yeah, it's always nice to, get something different again obviously there's the struggles because like in the four midgets you're still at full throttle stuff and in a band it's like okay now i have to get back into the brakes and stuff and then i'm back in the quarter midget so it's like wait i don't i'm uh i'm like pushing the brakes i'm like wait i don't i don't, I don't need to do this so it's 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 difficult but it's nice because you get that uh different experience have you been there to minnesota before or is this going to be a new track for you we went there last year, but had some struggles. Uh, we were we were fast in our animal, so hopefully we can be fast again this year. But yeah, it's only our second time running. Okay, T tell me because I'm curious. Is it set up similar to Topeka? Do you have to drive it a different way? You know what what are kind of the differences going up there? So it's not similar to Topeka. Topeka, okay. we have a decent amount of banking, but there's like real low banking at minnesota so that's one thing the line's completely different i remember last year after a practice day all the to everyone in minnesota they went home all us topeka kids had to stay there because our setups were horrible compared to everyone else they're so like i remember one of the things they're so loose i mean no one could make a lap it was just loose after loose after loose so we stayed there for like maybe three or four hours afterwards just 
the Topeka kids going out, practice, doing some laps, coming back in, fixing their stuff, going out. It was just that over and over again. So hopefully um, we can get it down this year. So just to paint the picture for everybody, the next three Tuesdays, the 16th, the 23rd, and the 30th, are going to be uh, your last three shootout races for the summer. And I know, obviously, because you've been racing in Charlotte, you haven't had a chance to see it. But I've seen some of the pictures um, that a lot of your Topeka fans out there um, back home have been coming out to uh, Jeremiah Bullfrogs, the restaurant right near you guys, and uh, having the watch parties all summer. I know you haven't been able to be there with them, of course. But what's that like to know that you guys have that fan base that's really coming out, having fun and supporting you guys, even though they can't be in Charlotte? It feels amazing because like all those people came there to see you. And that feels amazing. I, I wish I was there. I love Bullfrogs. They have amazing food, burgers, wings, fries, you name it. They have it. I wish I could be there. But I like that people can come out and they watch the races. I know whenever I finished second on that green white checkered, all, all my family was in the certain area that they gave us, mm. and they were cheering. And a few TVs at the bar that's by the area had it on, so they were cheering, and it got the people at the bar. My mom said to start cheering, and that's it cool. went on with the whole thing that everyone started cheering. That's cool. Hey, it's really infectious when things are going well. Oh yeah, and even I know my mom said this previous week. One of my neighbors came out, and they didn't even know that they were going to come. So that's also nice that that's we can cool. pull in more people to racing. It, it's, you know, it. we talk about it all the time. You know, you build a fan base, you get people involved, and then once, that, once they see how much you enjoy it, they start to enjoy it too. Yeah, that's really what happened with me and how I got into it. I uh, saw my grandpa enjoying watching races, and I started enjoying them, and now here I am. Absolutely. So before we wrap up, Tegan, I know you've got, including Bullfrogs, a lot of people and, and supporters that go into making this possible. Uh, who are your thank yous, the sponsors and supporters that you need to give a shout out to? I want to give a thanks to Hudobo, Topeka, Manhattan, and Junction City, Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, Thrivent Financial, DC Lawn Care, Royal Signs, and ATP Restoration. All right. And for those, uh, if you're in the Topeka area watching this and want to uh, come back out to Jeremiah Bullfrogs for one of those last three summer shootout races, the Flow Racing broadcast starts around 4.30 Central Time, 5.30 for those of us on the East Coast. And even if you can't come to the watch party, uh, you can tune in flowracing.com uh, with your subscription to be able to watch Tegan in these last three shootout races and all summer long. Tegan, always fun to chat with you. I know uh, you're, you're going to have a lot of busy going back and forth these next couple weeks, but we'll see you in a few weeks and uh, see how you did, see how this summer finished off for you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks That's, for doing this and can't wait to see you in a few weeks. Absolutely. That's Tegan Nolan. My name's Jacob Seelman. This has been another Race Face Drive in 5, and we'll see you next time here on Raceface.tv, where you can go for all the latest news in motorsports.